Hello friends, Mandar here. I am back with another video. Today we are going to talk about the Meng Amendment. It has again taken its head out. And also we are talking about some of the other regulations that have been proposed in, in this year and the next year. We are also talk, going to talk about some of the important questions in adjustment of status, such as change of address, getting weird statuses on your um, I-485 application, getting calls from the visa officers from the field offices regarding your application, what to do in case of the expired I-94s, travel and lot more questions that are common to you. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada. I am not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now check out the links in the description of my channel and on this video, you will find some of the products that you might be interested in. And if you click on those links and buy the products, the channel will get a little bit of a commission. And as usual, if you want to get in touch with me and get my personal opinion on your situation in the sense that what I would do if I were you, do contact me on my Patreon site. I have the link in the description and also on the screen. It takes me about a day or two to respond back to your question because of the volume, but I do get back. And if I don't get back, don't hesitate to send me a reminder. Now, first of all, I wanted to say Happy Canada Day for my Canadian viewers because tomorrow, July 1st is Canada Day. And also in the US, we have the Independence Day on July 4th. So happy long weekend to everybody in Canada and US. Now let's talk about the first topic of today. The first topic is change of address while your I-485 or adjustment of status is pending. Now it is very common that adjustment of status process takes very long between the time that you apply for your adjustment of status and between the time and you get your green card. It, it could take up to a year or two and even more, even if your date is current. And that is the reality. Now, during this time, you may change your job or you may change your address. Especially if you change your address, even being with the current company, there are some implications and you want to be careful about it. So say for instance, you remain in the same city with the same job, but you change your apartment or you buy a new home in the same geographical area. What should you do? you should immediately file the change of address form on the website, particular to the application for 485. This is important because any future correspondence that you will get needs to be uh, received at the new address and you don't want to miss any of that. So remember that. Now, second scenario is if you move out of the geographical area, so say for instance, you live in Seattle and now your job has uh, remained the same, but uh, you moved to California or Texas or somewhere else. What happens now in this case you have to be more careful the first thing you got to do is change of address form particular to your application remember they have made a provision to submit a change of a change of address for per application so you you got to do that that is the first thing second thing is talk to your lawyer if any of the terms and conditions for your uh, adjustment of status and green card application have changed because of the change in the location is it a significantly different geographical area in terms of job market, in terms of salaries and things like that? You got to be careful about that. The reason is if there is a significant change, then your lawyer may ask you to file a new perm application and new I-140. In majority, vast majority of the situation, this may not apply if you are in the same job and similar salary range, even after changing your location. But in some fringe instances, it might be applicable. So be careful about that. And then the third scenario in the address change is if part of your family, so say for instance, you have your uh, husband, wife and kids. So wife gets a job in a different place and she moves out, say in, in a different, different geog geographical area. Now, when you applied for your 485, you applied it all together with the same address. Now within during the time of adjustment of status, your wife and kids have moved to a different location. Now you got to do this uh, address change update to USCIS. Now if the, if the change is temporary, if, if they are just gone for two months or three months and are coming back, then you don't need to do it because you keep your primary address the same because that is a temporary situation. 
but if they are gone for say six months or a year or more then you got to do an address change for them now the only draw, uh, downside of this address change with split in the family is the principal applicant now has a different address than the dependents so your uh, i485 application might be processed separately so because of the address change now if there is a final interview for the primary applicant it will be closer to the original address whereas the dependents may get a different address for their interview based on their new address so that is something you got to remember now i keep getting emails and i keep getting notifications from my viewers that lot of people are getting their green card and some of them are still getting uh, in that weird situation where their date is still not current and they still get a uh, green card issued to them now in one particular instance yet another particular instance the applicant has not upgraded from eb3 to eb2 but had a previous i140 approval and uscis went ahead and proactively attach that previously approved i140 to the pending eb3 i1485 uh, and just issued the green card because the date was current so now they have been doing that if i have got notification of at least uh, a dozen of people then imagine what the number would be across the board so i think this is becoming a common occurrence now what i would suggest if i were you i would still want to get a confirmation from uscis that the green card that they have issued is valid and what is the reason so make sure if i were you i would reach out to uscis with a letter through an attorney or through a personal letter to them asking for an explanation for the green card approval and keep that explanation back to you in most of the scenarios uscis will not accept their mistake and they will just give some explanation and uh, give you back the letter and that letter is important because you want to make sure that uh, you are covered in case there are any questions in the future in your immigration petition now in some other instances uscis had rescinded their green card that they had issued and they had put the uh, the applicants back into the adjustment of status so that is quite possible but the important thing is you take action knowing that the green card was probably issued in error or without your date being current so whatever the scenario may be uh, it is important for you to get that confirmation from uscis that is my personal opinion now we'll look at the sponsor's video and that brings me to the sponsor of this video which is surfshark surfshark is a vpn provider and that gives you a lot of benefits that you are looking for now here is what all surfshark has to offer it gives you the power to protect your online privacy control your personal data access content safely and unlock the exclusive benefits of this what else can it do you can browse privately encrypt your internet activity so that no one can steal or track your data hide your location this is the key when i was talking about being able to watch the netflix and amazon from different countries block ads and malware stay safe on public wifi keep searches private and get real search results and if you are in the tech or it industry you know what vpn can provide now if you click the link in the description with my code mandar you will get a discount almost 83% discount on vpn deal and plus 3 months of absolutely free vpn so check out the link in the description and if you do get the surfshark through my discount code it will also benefit the channel now another important question and very common question is usually when people have been waiting for their i485 approval for a long time in some instances they see the case being moved from one service center to another now this is actually a good thing in the my opinion that is uh, you haven't received any update for a while and now you get an update that your case has been moved from one service center to another it is it means that your case has actually been touched by somebody and now there is a highly high likelihood that somebody at the new service center might pick up the case and process it so in my opinion if you ask me it is a good thing now another question is if there is a pending uh, eb3 i140 in your downgrade petition and i140 is not yet approved and it if, if it is stuck in the texas or nebraska service centers and if you have uh, applied for upgrade petition from eb3 to eb2 um what happens should you actually premium process your downgrade i140 before your inter interfile gets picked up um my answer previously was no but i am now shifting towards saying that you should get your downgrade petition approved uh, the i140 approved uh, with premium because it seems like 
the case uh, cases are being moved out of the Texas and uh, Nebraska Service Center to National Benefit Center only for those whose I-140s or EB-3 I-140s were approved. And if you have a pending I-140s, then they are not moving those cases. So that is the only reason you might want to kind of expedite your I-140 approval for the downgrade petition and get it approved so that your interfile can proceed. Now there are some weird instances where the USAS officers from field offices are reaching out to individuals for a variety of things. In one instance, they could not find their uh, supplement J that they had submitted along with their interfile petition. So they asked uh, somebody to submit it again. So uh, be on the lookout for any kind of email or phone call or letter from the field office USCIS officer and uh, be sure to respond to them in the timely manner. And in this case, you, you should respond directly to the person or the field officer that has got in touch with you. If it was a phone call, be sure to take their name and exact address so that whatever documents they have asked, you can send, send it directly to them. This is actually a good news because they are proactively reaching out for missing documentation so that they can adjudicate your case before uh, September 30th. I know there is a tremendous push for USCIS to use up all the visa numbers and this is one of the things that they are doing. So be on the lookout for any phone call number. Typically if there is no caller ID or uh, unknown number, we don't usually pick up the phone. But in this critical situation, you might want to pick up that phone. Uh, it could be the USCIS officer. Now a lot of questions regarding traveling on EAD and uh, uh, traveling on advanced payroll. So if you are in the adjustment of status process, uh, if you don't have your uh, non-immigrant visa stamped on your passport, but if you do have a valid uh, advance parole, uh, there is no um, there is no risk in going out and coming back to the United States. Uh, there is no risk in travel. That's that's what I believe because that is the whole point of advance parole. The, it, it is a th travel authorization for you to leave and come back within a short duration of time. Just make sure that you don't go for extended period of time. Definitely not beyond six months or a year. Year uh, definitely not because that will abandon your green card process. A lot of people have uh, an expired I-94 and they end up staying or uh, overstaying their visa while in the United States. Now the problem is whenever you, uh, whenever you apply for your extensions or amendment, you get a new I-94 attached to your approval notice. Now that is your new I-94 date, uh, what is, whatever is mentioned. But if you travel and come back, USCIS always issues you a new electronic I-94. Now that date is always different than what you have on your I-94 approval for H1 or L1. So be sure to check out online I-94 status of your visa after you come back into the United States because the USCIS officer may have issued you a new date and that date uh, depends on various different factors if they feel like your stay should be shorter or if your passport validity is shorter they may give you a shorter validity I-94 uh, date online. Nowadays they don't attach any paper copy to your passport so it's very difficult to know unless you go online and check your uh, I-94 date so it is very important to do that. Now the clock reset thing after uh, interfiling for AC21 job portability. This question I have, I have answered this question n number of times in my past videos and I will reiterate it because it com keeps coming back again and again. So there is a AC21 job portability rule which says that if you have been waiting for your uh, adjustment of status uh, for more than 180 days since the time you applied for I-485 then after 180 days of pending adjustment of status, you are free to change your job in a similar role in a new company or in the same company uh, after 180 days. Now the question is, if you um, interfile from EB3 to EB2, having after waiting for 180 days originally, uh, does the clock reset? Well, I have specified this in my channel several number of times. Uh, yes, USCIS does say on their website that the clock resets now there is a little bit of a confusion whether because you have already waited for 180 days now why do you need to wait another 180 days my my suggestion is if you if your enter file is based on an already approved i-140 eb2 i-140 should be able to change your job without having to wait for another one 180 days your case is more de defendable in that situation 
but say for instance you are applying for a new ieb2 i140 while doing the interfile uh, then i would suggest you that don't change the job for 180 days and here is my ultimate suggestion if you are in a situation where your date is current and you are interfiling just don't change the job don't change the job period until september 30th it is very likely that you will get your green card within the next 3 4 months why do you want to go through this complicated scenario of 180 days and uh, ambiguity just don't change the job if you have an offer see if they can defer it for another couple of months or just take a job offer after 1st of october that would be my personal suggestion that's what i would do if i were in your case mm. now everyone is excited about this meng amendment that has again taken its shape so what has happened is so meng is the house representative and last year if you remember i had made a video on it as well she had proposed to recapture all the wasted visa numbers since 1992 So now these visa numbers are not just for family based but also for employment based. So she has proposed that all those numbers wasted numbers should be recaptured and they are anywhere between 200,000 to 300,000 numbers uh between e, uh, FB and EB category. So total that did not pass last year but this year again the appropriations committee within the uh, within the house has uh, has actually Uh, agreed to move forward with it so it's it's passed in the sub committee now what happens after this is it it has to pass through the house and through the senate which is a very tall order and it will be in the appropriations bill which will be one line item within the big uh, scheme of things so whether or not it stays in the in the bill or not that's another story and whether or not the house version even if it passes uh, remains the same as in senate version that is yet another story so it is very very far fetched uh, idea so don't get too excited about this recapture of these numbers uh, since 1992 it has its downsides as well because uh, meng is saying that uh, family based spillovers that were unused go back to family based and even for this fiscal year so this year and next year so don't get too excited so even if this bill passes you may get some extra green cards but remember those spillovers from this year may not be available either so it's kind of catch 22 it's double edged sword and then there are a lot of new regulations that are in the news i will prepare a separate video on those because there are some good news and, and some are not so good news but they are very far fetched they are just in in proposal stages this year and next year when if and when they will pass is anybody's guess but i will make a special uh, video on those planned regulations so so far if you like the content of this video please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel enjoy the summer and i'll see you in the next one